Okay, it's live now. Caleb, can you see it okay? Hey, boys, Mad, Jacob. Can I recommend that you guys just are loud and clear? I know you can be loud. Oh, yeah, I can be attention to Miss Hetrick was making fun of me for not knowing where to put the camera and she doesn't like bubble gum on the bottom of a broken table as a backdrop. I don't understand but so stand in front of the TV and it gets the red of our broken furniture with bubble gum stash. All right now I need you paying attention to these guys not you two. I don't trust you guys with technology right now. All right, are you guys ready? No. All right, quiet, the floor is there. Okay, so if any of you have ever been to the grocery store, more than likely you've noticed how many plastic bags they give you at the checkout. They'll double bag just a single carton of milk, and it frustrates me and many others that they are wasting so much plastic for no reason at all. So our bill, what we would like to do is we would like to uh, eliminate plastic bag use, single time plastic bag use in Tennessee among all retailers uh, that uh, sell <clears throat> product and use single use plastic bags. So we're going to do this by taxing the retailers that use plastic bags and we're going to tax them until they switch to an alternative such as paper bags or some like a a cloth bag or something else that's less harmful to the environment. When the bill is enacted, they will uh, use all of the current plastic bags that they have in stock uh, for customer use. And then after they run out, uh, they will have to start buying a different alternative to use. And there are much cheaper alternatives as well. Uh, so that will not cost the company any amount of money. They can actually just take that money and improve upon their business more in a different aspect. And any of the money that got uh, that received from the taxes will be used to raise awareness 
for the company. So overall, this will not cost the companies any amount of money. Uh, it'll be better for the environment, and with the extra money that they have, we can erase or undo some of the damage that they've already caused. Okay. Questions, please. Yes, sir. How are you going to know who uses the plastic bags and when they use them? Anything that people buy can be monitored in a way, and we'll just use the that. That sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you plan to raise, like, how do you plan to raise awareness? Sorry. I mean, signs and posters. <laughs> and also, there are, like, a lot of nonprofit organizations that are already working towards this problem, and we're just going to be adding on to that. They can also, if they were to also switch to a different type of material uh, mm -hmm. and just mass produce that, it would, they would continue to make profit, maybe not as much, but to be honest, I don't think that those companies that are making so many plastic products and that are bad for the environment, I think that those are starting to be shut down anyway. And that we're moving towards a more healthy uh, lifestyle. What about like the reusable plastic uh, bags? So companies can choose. We're not saying that they have to do a certain type of bag or another. They can choose whatever type that they want that's best for them and uh, best for the people that they work with. And a lot of companies have already been using uh, reusable plastic bags or not reusable plastic bags. Uh, but just reusable types of bags, and that uh, would be a lot better than plastic bags that they're using now. What's the percent of tax that can be added? So at the beginning, it's going to start as like 1% taxes and 2%, so it's not too much of a profit, but if they don't listen, it's just going to keep on increasing. So when the bill is enacted, uh, they, like I said, they're going to use all the plastic bags that they have in stock at the moment, and then, uh, <clears throat> sorry, after that, they're going to to be taxed every time that they buy more plastic bags. How often will the tax change? Uh, I think it was like, I think it's every two years or every one year. If they all switch at once to a different type of bag, are there enough available? They can make enough available because if they're, if they're getting a lot of, if they're, if companies that are making the bags that they want are getting more money, then they can make more to get more money. That is Well, then they suck it up. Oh. <laughs> Quick, man. Last one. Uh, how, like, how will the authorities or the people check on how much, how many ba plastic baggage that the retailers have in stock? How will they know how many they have? Like, how, how will they know they just aren't getting more from their providers? Well, uh, well, we could set, set up a system so that. <clears throat> there's someone monitoring or there's a system monitoring like at Walmart they have the bags on this little rack so that the only purpose for the timing and they let questions go over last year if you guys will remember they were there they let them go over but really I wish they wouldn't because that saves you from having to you know sometimes it can be good since you get extra time sometimes it could be if it's a tough question it can be Difficult to try to cover that track and you really people hanging up like you've got the answer, but we can Yeah. All right, so let's give them a little bit of a, a a little bit of critique, a little bit of what could they have done a little better. So um, you could have just like specified on certain stuff a little better, like including like you said that they could switch the different types of bags that were just better, but you didn't really specify on what different opportunities they have. We have a list written down somewhere, but I did not memorize it. I remember we, we could still have had notes. And yeah, and we would have been able to have notes. So. Yes, sir. Uh, I think they could have like had like the percentages like better, like more specified and how it would increase over time. And also like which department is controlling and monitoring this because that also costs money, so that could also be taken. Yeah. And then the types of questions we'd want on the front end so you guys yeah. can be prepared for that. Or add to. Yes, sir. Um, I think you've got to talk a little more, if I'm being honest. Kind of overpowered.
power to press my back. Keep your brain behind your mouth. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like talking and kissing. I'm just kidding. Uh, other questions? Uh, critiques? All right, positive. Give us some positive. Um, you did really well uh, talking and like presenting. Yeah. Um, I think. Yes, ma'am. You did very well, like, responding to the questions and answering them. I like the idea of not using your plastic bags or using reusable plastic bags. Yeah. Yes. I love how you use the example of more than the other one. Okay. Other positive <coughs> more? Last year, one of the things that they did, their bill this bill passed to the next round. It got out of the chamber, but they never had an opportunity to present it to the House or the Senate because time ran out. They said we didn't have enough time. Yeah. It was so, very frustrating. So that's one reason that they wanted to spill the spill over and do it again because they're like, we were there. We felt we could get this passed. And remember, while this bill may not be, I don't know, feasible, I mean, because there's so many plastic bags out there. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, you're pitching it to your peers because you think it's something that should happen. Your peers are voting on it because they like the idea. Your presentation counts in there. The way you wrote the bill helps influence that. So when you guys are working on bills next year, nothing is too far-fetched to go for, OK? If it's something that you think is a good idea, and that I think is an excellent idea, go for it, OK? Go for it. All right, thanks, guys. Are these all three sides? Just put them in the middle of your table, guys, when you have your notes. You know, get them. Thank <laughs> you. 
while we were in like a peak of pandemic and a lot of people were working for home, from home and had a lot of flexibility, 60% of the eligible American voters voted, which isn't a lot, but it's still more. And that is about 144,320,000 people. So a lot of people probably want to vote, but they don't have the opportunity to because they have to go to work. And so this bill will help in that and allow more Americans to vote and get their opinion out there. Um, if the company owner fails to offer their employees the day off, then they will receive one warning. And if they do it again, then it's a $1,500 fine. And each time after that, it, it, the fine increases by $500. And all the money in this bill will go to the Tennessee Election Commission to be used at their own discretion. Right. We have some questions, please. So, if it's an optional work holiday, would but there's a warning if you don't get the holiday, that quite optional. I but it's optional for the person to take the day off. Oh, okay. Um, since election day is only once a year, don't you think that you should like up the punishment? No. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb said it should be $30,000. Right. Yeah. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, you do not need to comment. Decrease it by a lot because it's not $30,000. Yes, what percentage of the people who uh, did not vote at the last election are from Tennessee. About like because you said sixty percent of Americans voted of eligible Americans voted. What percentage are that of are from Tennessee? There are fifty states. Only that two percent. Questions? Yes, ma'am. And how many people got unexpected? You got to be honest about it. Don't make up an answer, okay? And, and don't get caught into that trying to estimate. We don't know that for sure, and that's okay to say that. If you don't know, admit to it. It's better than making up something and then getting called out on it later. Yes. All right. Did you give more statistics based on Tennessee? Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I was concerned that you got crossed over at the beginning when you were talking nationally, which is fine to reference, but then you should have brought it back to Tennessee. Yeah. And then that would have answered these sibling questions ahead of time, so you don't have to give them a hard time tonight over dinner. All right. Yes. Yeah. 
perfect this to go to youth and government, I, I would continue to encourage them to talk about their classmates that they interviewed and talked to and how this has affected them. And the whole bill idea came out of Zoe, who actually had to deal with the situation in a tennis tournament. And she said, you know, they should just look at all of these things. And they're not saying cancel sports because I can't do it. They're saying just don't schedule it on this holiday. So they're not, that, that shouldn't affect anybody negatively. It just means you can't play on this day because it's Christmas morning and nobody wants to get up and go play basketball that day. Or maybe they do. I don't know. But anyway, you see, we, we already have some of that in place. So thank you, ladies. Excellent job. All right, give them a little bit of feedback. So, huh? In just a moment, I'll let you go back there. I'm going to go ahead and walk that on. Up and ready.
they're going to be teaching people or like any other facilities or things that they could use during the summer? There would probably be a little bit of added cost for paying the workers overtime to do the course, but there shouldn't be any extra cost if they would already have the field. Oh, so um, is maybe like thought forever during is it like a one day course or is it like over like kind of like a oh it's like sessions of stuff? Oh, we'll see, yeah, a couple of sessions. There's multiple things you got to teach if you want to be CPR certified at the end. It would probably also be up to the hospital, but if you have people already ready during the pandemic, so how much time do you think about the like, of the lab? It's still not going to be passed for a while, so hopefully we're out of the for pandemic when it's passed. However, if we're not, then the hospitals will find a way to deal with that, whether it be like outside courses or other, other things like that. Oh. Any available in the hospital?
So like if uh, an officer is driving and they see that somebody has a pet and it's like crawling around on like the driver's lap or something, that could they could see that as being a distraction for the driver and pull them over and there would be a fine for that. Um the penalty it was like last one year, the first um penalty would be you would be fined a hundred dollars and you would have to be get twenty four hours of community service. The second time within a year you would do you would be fined two hundred dollars and forty eight hours of community service and then finally for the third time you would have to be you would have to pay four hundred dollars and do seventy five hours of community service. But for each fine it can be altered by like a police officer depending on what happens and like what they see in the car. And each year like I already said the uh number started. Also, uh, that that bill can be at, or that uh, fine can be added on to other fines. Um, if you're doing anything else, like if you're drunk or something, that can be added on to if you have a pet um, that's not secure. And also to add on what what Jenny said, uh, it's not just if it's in the front seat. Like if you have a, a pet in a pickup in like the back of the pickup truck and that would be insecure because it could go flying out. And if you have it in a cage, you still probably you should probably strap it on the cage so it doesn't fly out. All right, thank you guys. All right, let's have some questions, please. Henry. What makes a pet insecure? Um. So if it can like get itself out or get put itself in any danger in any way, even if a human doesn't do it, so like if you put, like what I said, if you put it in a cage, then you would still need to strap it down or else it would be able to still get, get out. Yeah, and it could be at the officer's discretion because if like they have other people in the car and say like you have somebody in the passenger seat holding the pet, that could be counted as secure because somebody's holding it that does not need to be focused on the road. Um, where will the money go? Um, like if you pay the fine, where the money go? Oh, we would really make it go to like police officers, like counties and stuff, and then some would go to like animal shelters to be able to pay for like stray animals. Um, do you, if there's no one else in the car besides the driver, do they have to buy like animal scent, animal seatbelt? Um, they would have recommended. Yeah, but they could, it just would have to be something that kept the pet from distracting the driver or running around in the car while it's moving. Oh. So, um, I know a lot of people make rides too, Um, 
it's some it's in a different car than the owner. Like if if somebody had the owner is driving with it insecurely and the owner is not in the car, most yeah. well, the driver could be fine because they're the ones supposedly supposed to secure the owner. Yeah. 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 Three minutes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what service dog, what service animal. So if we're thinking about you know seeing eye dogs. No, Hopefully those people right. aren't driving, right? No. But like some people that have like, um, like heart conditions or something. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I think sometimes our bill of choice that, that we're presenting can lend itself more towards the style that you did, where you're leading off these statistics about, you know, these chemicals and things. It seems to be more of, a, I understand why you're reading that. I can't remember what that's called either. As opposed to trying to get the heart felt, you know, you get in the car wreck with the dog and you thrown to the butt, or, or, you know, my friends had to choose between this and that because of a religious holiday. I think depending on what your bill is, it can also depend on your presentation style. You can go for it too. Yeah. Anything else for him? And it's hard. You remember, he was solo. He didn't have somebody to bang off of right here. Yeah. I like the idea. Good ideas. Yes, sir. You got a lot of this, and this is for being by yourself. I just took most of the information out for me. Because this whole thing was made last year with yeah. you know, when I worked on it. But that's the thing, you know, that's the thing. You guys have your bills this year that you're able to hang on to for next year if you want to. Okay, and that's going to be available to you because we didn't present it officially this year. And even some of us that presented it officially last year wanted to, like Jacob and the shot, they wanted to push it through because they didn't get their second chance to present to the houses. And they felt strongly about what they had. So it, the more passion you have into it, the better off you are. So thank you, Taylor. All right, Grayson and Jack, we're going to be back. Thank you. Give us some comments, guys. No, we don't. Lots of people back to the house. 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 Lots of people back to Okay. Hey guys, I need you to get. I need you guys to refocus here. Have a seat, Mark. I need y'all to refocus here because what we've had happen here is we've lost our care to become play again. Remember, be aware. The guys that are presenting now. Put the same amount of effort and care into what they're trying to do as the ones at the beginning when you were giving your uh, feedback more, I don't know, I'll, I'll use the word professionally. And now we're trying to be silly constantly. And I'm serious. If you don't want to be here, go. Okay? This isn't just a get out of jail free card. Okay? These people aren't up here just for your entertainment purposes. They want to perfect this craft also, okay? So think about your questions before you're asking them. We've had several questions that are the same questions over and over and over again because you're not listening to each other or you feel you have to say something, okay? Ask them good questions. Give them real feedback. It's going to help them in the long run. You would want the same thing. You don't want to stand up here and talk in front of everybody and then not take you serious, okay? So just, come on, remember, check yourself. That's all. We've got good ideas. Every bill, I mean, and I've listened to them all and helped everybody a little bit with them. They're all good ideas. Okay? So give them the respect that you would want for yours. Okay? So if you're not going to write them any kind of productive note, then don't write one at all. Okay? Okay? So take yourself serious along with it. Okay? All right, are you guys ready? All right. Parties, haunted houses, trick or treating. All of this gets cut short because you have school the next day. We can't let the system keep doing this. Hi, I'm Grayson McGee. And our bill is to make the day after Halloween a professional development day. Professional development days already exist in our school system, and we have a set amount that we have to fulfill every year. So why not make it a day that we really want off? Uh, my mom's a teacher, and every year she dreads the day after Halloween because her students are always zombies and really do nothing that day. As a student myself, I know the pain. I'm always tired and just want to stay home and eat candy the next day. It's just a pain for me to have to go to school and do my best. Uh, a 
few years ago, I went trick or treating with Grayson over here, Mr. Man, and <laughs> we really couldn't stay out long enough because we couldn't go to the next row of houses because we knew we had a math test in that uh, math test the next morning, and we couldn't really just stay out. In conclusion. If the day after Halloween was a professional development day, it would help not only the students, but the teachers too, at no cost. Alright. Question for them. Ben. What is a professional development day? Okay, so it's pretty much kind of like, it's a day off for the students so that the teachers are still in school so they can help plan things for the future. Yeah, we have a lot of random ones like that. What if Halloween is on a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday? Then the, following, ahead. then the following Monday would be the professional development day. Okay. Other questions? Very simple. I don't really think we would change it if the teacher just kind of doesn't want to follow. They can suck it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, what we're that's, my, that's what they tell us all the time. Oh. I think we're like support adding another professional role. Yeah. We're we aren't not. adding one. We're just saying uh, it's up to each school or the county uh, to change one of the days to make it this. So we don't have to make anything other added into the county. Yeah. You said that. Um, if it was on a Friday or Saturday, that it would be the following Monday, but wouldn't that mess up the whole weekend of it? Because if it was on a Friday, we would have the next day off still. Well, the reason that we're just doing it anyway is to keep consistency, because then you'd have to reschedule the other professional development days, and that would possibly make the consistency schedule. So, like, would there be any punishment for, like, not doing this, or? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you kind of just have to. We didn't really think about punishment, so it's kind of a county wide thing. Here's a question. When you have a law like that, the law is the law. If school systems are going to, I mean, they're going to be like, oh, okay, they're just going to move a professional development day. Do they get to choose that day? Typically, we do. They're usually around the end or the beginning of a quarter. So what they're fighting for is if they get off of a day when teachers dread coming back the next day, because even if it's just finding candy wrappers, show up with candy wrappers off in the hall, or having to confiscate the candy, or I, mean, I don't think you'd have many teachers, Hattie, going, no, 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 no. I think you'd be like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Suck it up. All right, give us some feedback, guys. It was good. It was very good. It was very good. Uh, Nearly perfect. Good. Um, I thought it was really good because you were really comfortable with the whole idea, and I just like the way you presented it. You were very passionate about it. Yeah. You were able to put a lot of details into something that you guys said was simple, but you still made it like you know worth listening to. And I uh, we just also love perfect. You did. You like your life into a book. Hi, my name's Grace. Hi, my name's Grace. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good idea. Like I was trying to get Jack to wear his Jack Skellington outfit if we were gonna do if we were gonna get to present this on uh, the Zoom. I was like, you need to wear your Jack Skellington outfit for the presentation I, I just to, just to hit the theme. I know you wore it on Halloween yeah. right around there, and I was like, you need to wear that when you present. Uh, I like how you had like examples to explain like the city of Rome and the people you should do like very strong for the day. And, and this kind of got started, I think, when we were thinking about who we presented to last year. Because you guys had some great bills, and not a lot of them, like the eating and driving or drinking, you know, your fast food and driving, they didn't want that. They were like, no, I want to drink coffee when I'm driving to work, you know? They were like, but they knew it was a good idea and to present it. And so, 
an excellent idea, but then the people they were presenting it to what were like, well, what if your food gets cold? Silly little they thing. Said, said, what if I, I don't want to microwave it? Right. Because what if I'm on a long road trip and I don't want to stop? And so, so where we out. took it really serious last year and thought about real life things that can make a change, these guys were thinking, well, you know, some of the bills we can just present to sell to the middle school kids. Right. And Boom. <laughs> and it makes sense because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice and simple bill. It doesn't cost any money. It just means we have to move this day to this day. And I don't really know anybody that would be anti. Okay, well, sure. Why not? We got them anyway. I remember last year my brain was exploding. We had to do a bunch of math to calculate how much we had to take out of taxes. And I just said, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And, not, and not every bill has to have a fine. Not every bill has to, to deal with the money. So sometimes, like like your bill, there, there's a fine if they're not applying the law. So your bill is just making tobacco companies and smokeless tobacco companies be responsible. Show us what's in it. We originally started doing out of spite because we had a really good concept last year, but it got cut off because the students didn't want to do it, and then we just kind of went with it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give them a little bit of feedback. Thank you. Um, that Oh, that was one of the fifth grade reports. Are you with Mr. 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 a lot more if we had done youth and government this year of what does a zoom presentation look like um, not that so hum and this to practice what the zoom presentation is going to look like so once again she's just kind of going off the cuff on this also very casual but their bill is the bill that they had last year and this bill had another partner who on them this year and they, um, they presented this bill last year, and this is the bill that, I don't know, I, I felt got the highest praise because they didn't necessarily pass to one of the houses, but it was recognized by the adults in charge as being a well-researched and well-thought-out and prepared bill because there's for the nutshell was about um, giving uh, incentive to buy electric cars. And they, I don't know how much what the presentation piece is going to go into it, but this is the one that they had where the money's coming from, why they chose to bring the money from here, what's going to happen with the extra money, how long is this bill going to take place, and, and the why, and what their goal was. And they had so much, as you can hear, almost every question so has been asking has been, Statistics, where's your facts? What's your information to follow up on this? That's why their bill got that praise. They got that award last year because they had so much 
backing information, and they covered almost every possible rabbit hole that they could go down. Whether you know where's the extra money going, where's the money going to come from if it doesn't, they had all these answers wrapped up tight. And then when you're thinking you're presenting this to middle school kids, they're not buying cars. These guys aren't ready to buy cars, right? And so it doesn't really maybe interest them as much, but the bill was written so well that the adults were like gold medal for that, right? What award did they get? It was the outstanding bill award. Oh, yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I thought there were two. I thought there were at least two, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's what I like about that. When you can cover your rear end, so to speak, about all the little things, where the money's coming from, what you're doing, why you're doing it. Yeah. You've answered the questions before they can even be answered. I mean, asked. You answer them before they can be answered. I don't know that word. Okay. All right. So, just to thank you for uh, trying this out. I don't know if you can be seen on our webcam. The camera is small enough. This is like you're really small. You can't see me. I'm going to break it. Now I can't see so Now so harm can be capitated. I'm sorry, buddy. I can't have the best of both worlds. Yeah, that'll be fine. If you want to do that, we can lower the picture and we can see you both. Without so harm said? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So harm and his fucking computer. Go for it. All right, so this is an act to provide a tax incentive of 5% for any resident of Tennessee purchasing a new pure electric vehicle up to $60,000 in value until August 1st, 2025. 95% of Earth's population needs populated air, polluted air, and incentives would encourage Tennesseans to purchase pure electric vehicles to assist in lessening our state's pollution percentage. Most new pure electric vehicles produce from 90 up to 130 per gallon equivalency to gas burning vehicles, and an incentive would help decrease vehicular pollution. So the terms in this act are Pure electric vehicles, a vehicle that uses chemical energy stored in a rechargeable battery, Elect EV, electric vehicle, new vehicle, unused, previously unowned vehicle, bought from a licensed dealer. Next one. This act to provide an incentive of 5% of the new pure electric vehicles up to $3,000, which is 5% of $60,000. This act will cost an estimated six million dollars based on 2018 EV sales, and so the amount paid, the amount paid for this incentive will be raised by increasing gas diesel taxes by 0.15 percent, and this will generate approximately 57,000, 57,879,150 dollars of gas sales alone, and then this does not include the amount of diesel sold. All money not used in the new pure electric vehicle incentive will be transferred to the Tennessee Department of Transportation and added to their discretionary fund. This act will take place on August 1st of 2021. All right. Nice work, y'all. Okay. Some questions, please. Did y'all want to go hear her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. good. Questions, yes. Sir. Okay, so you were talking about based on the sales from like what year? 2018. Yeah. Okay, so after you put this bill in place, those the sales will go way up. Did you include that in the estimated cost? Yes. So, so we're generating like fifty-seven million dollars, and uh, and based on twenty eighteen EV sales, uh, we we would have gave a six million dollar incentive. So fifty-seven million dollars is a lot more than six million. So that could cover the amount. Good. Other questions? And she also, uh, Nisha also stated that that didn't include the diesel cells, yeah. which would generate more money for you. Yeah. And can you guys, I'm just going to ask you guys, since you have a moment, 
Why did you decide to take it out of the pack? What was the benefit for Tennesseans for taking it out of the fuel? Remember, we talked about that a lot last year. Isn't Tennessee a pretty big uh, tourist? Oh, yeah, place? because since we have like major highways running through Tennessee, uh, many like people coming through and like visitors would get taxed on the gasoline. And remember, that's only 0.15 of a cent which is not a lot, and that would generate a lot of money. Yeah, I think we'd estimated that that would be like filling up my, my minivan. It might only be like a nickel more. It's not much. It's pretty negligible in the big picture. Yeah. And I think you have that written in your bill, too. So now recognizing that is another reason you guys got so much credit for all the work put into it. So. Any questions? Oh. Again, that's not every law that's passed, not every incentive that's passed is something you agree with, right? I mean, we have tons of laws that half the country doesn't agree with, right? And so, if he was, you have to sweet talk him to get him to vote for your bill. If that's not something that would affect you, you would be like, no, I don't know. But at the same time, you're just dumped $50 million back into the Department of Transportation. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't, if, if they don't use their thing, it'll go to their yeah. fund. All right. All right, give him a little note. Thank you, Nisa. You don't have a camera on? I think you ran away. You ran away? What were you going to use it for? No, he's just ignoring it. Thank you, Nisa. Oh, she ran away.
They're actually supposed to submit the three and it's uh, 240. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited that we're ahead of time. Okay. So they've asked for their uh, presentation piece to go a little over. So I told them we could probably spare a minute. We could see what we could do. Yeah. Olivia was asking for 80. I said, no, we can't do that. 80? I was joking. <laughs> it was a joke. All right.
Okay. guys to think about this. Those that are asking about, well, the coach wife's going to be tired, or I like to move. Let's think about this. The purpose of the yoga is to help people calm, so that might help the coach wife. Right? And you don't get to opt out of running a mile, if that's what coach wife's having you do, right? So it's the same thing. So the people that think, oh, PE's about running and playing. Well, boom, we just kind of shifted gears on you. And guess what? you got to do some Chilling out now, too, despite your movement. All right, give them some feedback, guys. Give them some feedback. Um, it kind of sounded like you're, like, it looks like, and kind of sounds like you're just, like, reading an article to see all the same page. And, um, and it's kind of like, you know, all the words. Um, it's probably like you didn't know what the words were. I couldn't pronounce it. We want 100% there. Well, and this is this has been put together in what two weeks? It was a change <laughs> last night. Okay, so it, it hasn't been long, but it was an idea that spurred when we decided to shift gears. This idea has just kind of cropped. So that was done in a very short period of time. So not even once again, not enough preparation, but valid. You know, they would have to practice more, right, to get their presentation done. If we were to if we were to go to the actual government, any of the words that are like we wouldn't know, we would have defined. Yes. Um, something that you could like expand the bill to like a 20 minute like relaxation and mental health period so that like there'd be an option for yoga or reading or studying not it wouldn't be like recess where everybody would be running around playing but like you could do calming activities and stuff like that yes. 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 Uh, I like the idea of maybe you'll think this and brought up more of a tool Yes. I have a question. Like, if you're asking, asking, asking them, can you like specifically say from district and answer it? Like when you're in, in government, can someone do that? Okay, wait, so I'll start one more time. So like, if you're asking a question, can you specifically ask it to someone? I think so.
Oh, yeah. I remember people did that to us last year. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's one, I remember that's one thing that, uh, I'm pretty sure Ms. Campbell told us that when she came to talk to us at the, at the front end before we even did use the government, that if you're not, if she's yeah. not talking, then the judges talk are going to specifically ask her a yeah. question because they want to see if she's just standing there to make it look like lots of people are involved or does she know her stuff. So, will those PE students have makeup work in their next class? No, it would be just um, 20 minutes off the next class to add on to. But you would. So not everyone, not everyone is taking the PE uh, or like the PE elective at that time, and so like the people that were in the next class would not, not all of them would have this, so they would already be in the class, and so they could still be doing work, but they wouldn't stop doing that for much. Well, we haven't really looked, but that's what it had to happen. Hey, Miss Scarborough and Miss Hornsby are racking their heads around trying to figure out the schedules for next year. So that'd just be another scheduling nightmare that administration's used to, I think. Hattie, last question or comment. Um, well, um, if, if we decide to do something like that, then we would have to have a meeting with the I mean, I think most people can be employed by someone, but would not want to show their employer that they would do something like that and not listen, because it gives them a bad rep, and so, you know, they could have the risk of being fired, and then, you know, they wouldn't have the recommendation from their employer because they made themselves look so bad before. Yeah, you don't want to be represented. Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, we have one more, I think. Can I skip the one? You sure did go back. Can we skip us?
uh, very often, but it wouldn't really be fair to just say, oh, well, you're a big school, so you have to have this for the like, so, so you can't say, like, all schools, and just for safety measures, because you never really know mm -hmm. what, like, may happen, like, behind the scenes, and we should help find that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, um, so, like, we were talking with Miss Clifton the other day, like, she was talking about things that happened at her, um, like, at her middle school and stuff, like, and there were cameras in the hallway, but that didn't stop them, so how do you think that that, that it's actually going to stop, like, an issue from happening? It won't stop. But it'll help, it'll help catch, like, the people that are doing what it may be. Like done so they could privately enforce something. Yeah, completely. Um, this kind of spurred out of I think the conversation had originated about how uh, it doesn't, you know, what their parents, what their parents, mom, mom, our teachers here in the building, and they've had some situations before where things have been stolen, and so um, that's part of the thing of thinking about how. You can catch those people who creep around, whether it was you know, the night custodian or uh, somebody's parent, you know, walking into a room. You know, you just don't know. It could have been sooner or later. And that was how it kind of spurred. And then um, there was another. Oh, and Mark was bringing up the fact, and then his mom even confirmed that. that you know, to say this, it's not a camera. It's a computer lab. There's there's one outside. Now, there's one outside. Yeah, it's outside, so they know who comes in and out, but there's not one inside the computer office where all the computers are, right? Um, but they, they might be one now, but at the time, there wasn't. And then they're like, you know, where all the technology is, right? We've got to sit in the portable, but only outside now. And even with that being technology, even though it's not expensive, but usually there's like a lot of like textbooks and other things that can be. And we talked about this last year. Um, sometimes we're writing a bill because so how much that's where the money going to come from. And Mark Spencer, or one of y'all answered was straight up the school system. A lot of times bills are written and they're saying, well, the schools have to figure out how to pay for this. And then it becomes the school board's head. And then they're like, we're going to have to raise property taxes to pay for this bill if your state legislature is the best. And that happens. And so you sometimes get to pass the buck if you're trying to get your bill passed. And when you're writing bills and shit, and you can't figure out, and we don't have any tax control in the school, so we're going to let the school figure out how to do it anyway. It happens. It really does happen. Um, I think that if you do continue with the bill for a new government next year, you find what you have. You can probably include a personal store because that would have a lot more influence on it. Yeah, you can put more. Oh, no. No one knows. I don't know. 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 I don't know like it's a good thing that they had the, the cameras they did but i think even more would just help in um seeing what actually happened and getting a person to that time. and in the class it might help more to find out what exactly was taken out of the classroom because the hallway cameras now people have attempted to break into the school because even this year and officer joe is able to pull up those cameras i can see the people faces I mean, they might not know who they are, I mean, there's nobody here, but they can identify that and get that police off the head.